Coming up on show 759, Tesla turns on autopilot navigation for traffic lights and stop signs. Stick around and I'll tell you more. Plus on the show tonight, we're talking about a new Tesla patent application that's been granted for EV batteries. Is it a sign of what's to come at battery day? The Tesla Model 3 configurator changes in China again. Europe just beat China for EV sales. Hold on a second. Can that be right? Yep. And Audi adding the e-tron sport back to Australia. Well, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. This is what happened on Saturday, 25th of April. My name is Martin Lee and I go through every EV story so you don't have to. Thank you, as always, to MyEV.com for helping me make this here podcast. MyEV in the US is a marketplace that connects buyers and sellers, but does oh so much more than that. Uh, but do check it out if you're in the market. Uh, check out MyEV.com. But if you are researching or financing and warranties, even if you're a dealer of EVs and you'd like to find out more about what they are creating at MyEV uh, for dealers, well, you can find out what that means for you by going to myv.com. Tesla has been developing autopilot navigation for traffic lights and stop signs for, well, quite some time. And now the feature is finally ready for the public. According to Electric, Tesla has released a traffic light and stop sign control feature for autopilot. If this is coming to you, you want to look out for the update called 2020.12.6. According to Yahoo News, the update's release notes says the feature, which is still officially in beta, will give Tesla vehicles the power to recognise traffic lights even when they're off and to automatically slow down at intersections. Or drivers will get notification when the car intends to slow down and the vehicle will stop at the red line shown on the on-screen driving visual. They'll have to push down the gear selector or press the accelerator to confirm it's then safe to proceed. YouTube videos, of course, already hitting the internet, as is always the case. In fact, we got some previews of this a long time ago when bits of code were seen inside the system. And it's interesting to see the development of that and how long it takes for the super brains that work on things like software to get it right. But it does look like it's a very, very impressive piece of, of uh, software and hardware as well, using the cameras in the car to identify traffic lights and, of course, uh, using that neural net to train their system, to train the uh, the back end of Tesla, all the billions of miles, the three billion miles driven on autopilot, all feeding in to their giant supercomputer, we'll call it. It sounds pretty sci-fi. And uh, uh, feeding into their, their neural net, into their system, which is constantly learning about the real world and all the 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 infinite possibilities of things that uh, the drivers uh, deal with, and actually when you train a computer to take the wheel, the things that it has to learn. This has been coming for such a long time, and now Teslas can recognise uh, stop signs and stop lights as well. Traffic lights, really impressive feature. Looking forward to seeing how this one develops as well, but those early videos online do look really, really interesting. Nice little, on the uh, the central display, Nice little traffic light uh, symbol coming up as well. And just looks neat. Looks like it's working really well. Let me know if you've experienced it yet. I'd love to hear from you. As long-term listeners know, not a Tesla driver myself. So many of these things I can't just jump in the car and uh, and go and go and try out. Not, uh, not yet anyway. Well, Tesla has patented a new type of electrode to be used inside the battery cells that it builds in-house. The goal of the new technology, the new battery electrode, is to be, well, it's to be longer lasting and cheaper to produce. The new NCA electrode in the patent is expected to be used in the battery cells going forward inside Tesla's. According to the website Tweaktown, Tesla previously patented an electrode using a new generation, well, what they call a single crystal cathode and a new electrolyte. The team then was able to show 4,000 charging cycles. And for those people that don't think 
4,000 cycles. Is that enough? Yes, it'll get you about a million miles, a 4,000 uh, cycle battery. And even then, it's still a very useful battery for second and third life applications well into the 2030s and 2040s as well. These batteries are going to be lasting a very, very long time, by the way. And not just Teslas, all EV batteries. Uh, there's uh, so many examples of the batteries just coping really well and every little bit of advanced technology like this piece of news today uh, just shows how the work on battery technology on the cathode technology as well and the electrode technology is uh, moving it forward and be interesting to see and hear we think it's may the 4th we think anyway uh, when tesla factories properly reopen but also i think that's when battery day was scheduled in for but i haven't heard anything recently has that moved is it happening is it a virtual thing or are we, are we waiting post virus to do it well, moving on and tesla in china has released the white seating option for the model 3 and you know i didn't know it wasn't an option but as happened previously when they launched the model 3 uh, the model 3 was only available with black seats for chinese buyers says tesla Rati. they made the white seating available option on april 23rd it's another thousand dollars about eight thousand uh, yuan uh, yuan uh, the price for the upgrade about what you'll pay in the us as well to go from uh, the standard to the white interior now the interior option is available for all three of the made in china model 3 configurations they are to remind you the rear wheel drive standard range plus the long range rear wheel drive wish we could buy that here and the dual motor all-wheel drive performance moving on and this is on any other day if i hadn't just done a a trio of tesla news this would have been the lead story europe's five largest car markets just edged out china in EV registrations for the first quarter of the year. That's right. The biggest EV market in the world is no longer. Well, this is quarter one, and there was a bit of a virus that they were dealing with, uh, is an understatement. Europe's five largest car markets together beat out China. And of course, outbreak of of the virus, these shutdowns countrywide. According to a study by PricewaterhouseCoopers, PwC have a uh, subsidiary called Strategy. And according to the Automotive News Europe website, website, it was Germany, France, UK, Italy, and Spain collectively registered 79,300 full electric vehicles in the first three months of this year. In China, it was 77,256. Uh, unit sales more than doubled in Europe in that period compared to the first quarter of a year ago in 2019. In China, sales fell by more than half in the quarter because there was lockdown. So these are not normal circumstances. Uh, uh, apologies for the hyperbole at the beginning. Uh, however, it is still a big deal because China is the biggest market in the world. So uh, when everything is back to normal, whatever the new normal looks like, I'm sure they will regain their number one position. Well, across Europe, Renault's Zoe was by far the biggest selling battery-powered vehicle, ahead of the Peugeot 208 EV, the new one, and the Volkswagen e-Golf, which has had its production extended through towards the end of the year. I'm not saying that's because the ID3 has been delayed. They keep insisting the ID3 is coming in summer. Uh, well, they'll have the software ready, they keep saying. Uh, this just could be because people keep buying the e-Golf. The Egolf, which got cancelled uh, last year, by the way, a car that is officially not in production, they're still making lots and lots of and will be through to, like I say, almost the end of the year, uh, which was funny because they actually cancelled it last year and said, we're stopping it. And then recently went, no, 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 we're, we're going to carry on for a bit longer. People keep buying Egolfs. Uh, in terms of plug-in hybrids, Mitsubishi Outlander, the best selling, has been for a long time, no change there. Audi in Australia has added the e-tron Sport back to its website, confirming their planned release for the Australian market and the specifications as well. Audi e-tron Sport back is, well, like the e-tron, but with a swoopy doopy kind of rear end, uh, less SUV shape, more of a hybrid, sporty, crossover, swoopy hatchback thing. I don't know what these things are anymore. It, it, it looks like the e-tron but with a bit of the back cut off. It does look really, really nice, by the way. A very low profile to the rear. Two variants, again, same as the e-tron. There'll be the 50, there'll be the 55. According to the Aussie website, the Driven, uh, the 50 
has a battery pack that is not 50. It's 71. And the 55 has a battery pack that's not 55. It's 95. Clear as mud. Uh, the in the in the smaller battery that it's it's seventy one, but it's usable sixty four kilowatt hours, um, I think, and uh, about three hundred kilometers range on that. The fifty five Quattro, again ninety five odd kilowatt hours, but usable eighty six. Anyway, that's uh, that'll do about four hundred and fifty k's of driving. Good to see Aussies. The Aussie EV market seems to be moving quickly were maybe a year ago i would say uh, fairly i would say as well uh, was very backward very very little interest uh, some early adopters and not much else there seems to be some momentum in the aussie ev market at the moment i hope i'm right from how i'm reading it about as far away on the planet as i can possibly get from australia at uh, the other side of the planet here and let me know if I'm right or wrong. It seems like they're not just catching up, but but quickly as well. There's been an electric mini shootout test review. Uh, the magazine Autocar took the new mini electric, and they went for a drive alongside the Peugeot E208 and the Renault Zoe. Autocar says the Renault Zoe's range is the truly impressive bit. And it's decently practical, but it can't match the other two for build quality, they say. And it feels less engineered, or less expensively engineered, than the other two. That's what Autocar says. Uh, I have nothing to compare it to, because I've not driven the new Mini yet. But, I don't know. I, I always think the Renault is pretty well put together. I think the Peugeot is pretty well put together as well. It feels, they say, uh, that the less expensive versions of the Zoe... Uh, make more sense than the GT line, they say. That's their opinion. I don't know. I like the GT line personally. I know it's not cheap, but it's nice. Uh, the Cooper, the Mini Cooper, uh, feels nothing less than a premium product. The pricing starts at twenty four nine, twenty what twenty five thousand uh, pounds. You'll want to start adding some options onto that though. Entry level model is okay, but it is affordable, and the range is where you'll get hamstrung. I don't know, uh, you know, it's just, it's over 100 miles on the Mini. Uh, EPA range in the US is 110. I don't know what WLTP is off the top of my head. Um, but you know what? It's not style over substance because there is good engineering to the Mini Electric. It's basically a BMW i3S, sort of. But it's, you know, so it's good, good quality engineering. The range is a bit of a sticking point. I was going to say it makes a good second car, a second EV, but, you know, an expensive second EV if you're going to have a long-range one on the driveway as well. Right, final story. And case construction in the US introduces an electric vehicle with a difference. The 580 EV is the first ever fully electric backhoe loader, what I would call a digger, uh, which in the US... If I put it through the translator, you would call a backhoe or a backhoe loader. In fact, I'd call it a JCB because that's the, the name that is most associated with the toys that I played with as a child. Uh, the power and performance of the, uh, the backhoe loader is uh, better than the diesel-powered ones uh, in, its, uh, in its class. Lower operating costs as well. Zero emissions as well. Easier to work with as well. Government contractors will love it because of no emissions uh, what are the specs? 480 volt system, 90 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, charge it on any old connection and on a building site, you know, charge it overnight, it's full overnight and do an eight hour work day on it and it's still going strong at the end of the day. Uh, the battery system powers the drivetrain and the hydraulics as well and... Uh, during uh, the operation of it, they say uh, it's particularly good in, in areas where you have to have um, some sort of sensitivity of noise. So maybe you can't work at certain times of the day. This means you can get the job done quicker because your, uh, your digger is electric. Let's move on. Uh, question of the week is read out on Sundays, where well, your answers are read out on Sunday's show. And this week we'll be talking about whether people prefer to buy new EVs or used EVs. Email me about anything on the show. My address is hello at evnewsdaily.com. Well, there are 236 patrons of the show, 
And through the generosity of those people, you get to hear this. Uh, hopefully, if you want to check out Patreon, you can. Uh, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash evnewsdaily. Uh, the premium partners of the show are Phil Roberts of Electric Future at EF.Energy, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Brightsmith for Clean Tech Talent, Porsche of the Village Cincinnati, and Audi of Cincinnati East. There are 500, no there's not, there are 758 previous shows in the archive, and if you can leave a little review on Apple Podcasts, it really helps me grow the show. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow, and remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.